What is up guys, Zach here from the Chaos Galaxy and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make your very own trading cards using the software Photoshop like this guy right here. This is how I make all my trading cards for my game, the Chaos Galaxy TCG um, and today I'll give you a quick tutorial if you're a beginner get just getting into Photoshop um, to show you how to make a card just like this here. Whoops. First off, I want to ask you guys to please like and subscribe if you enjoy the video and find it helpful. Check out my game, the Chaos Galaxy TCG. Get your hands on some packs. I'll leave a link to the online store in the description below and I'll get started on this video. So getting into this video, I'm going to assume a few things of you guys. So first up, I'm going to assume that you have Photoshop installed on your computer already or a similar software. There's lots of free alternatives you can get. Um, there will be some dodgy ways of you getting real Photoshop, but I'm not going to go into that. That's for some other tech guy to help you with. This video is also going to assume that you have an artwork ready like this guy here. Um, you've drawn an artwork of a creature that you want to put in your trading card and then you've taken a picture of it ready to put onto your Photoshop template. The final thing that this assumes is that you have a way of actually printing your cards. Once we finish the cards on Photoshop, we're going to put them into a Word document and then print them through our computer that way. Um, so this is assuming that you have access to printing your own trading cards. So without further ado, I'll get into the tutorial. So if you're new to Photoshop, the first thing we're going to do is go File, New. Simple as. Um, we're going to name it Trading Card Example. Bit. Um, and then make it a custom sized document. We're going to make the document 2.5 inches wide and 3.5 inches tall. You can change the units here. Um, but the reason we're doing it this size is because this is the standard size of a playing card. So, so most like poker deck cards, Pokemon cards and Magic the Gathering cards are all this size. So it fitting, if you're going to put your cards into card sleeves or binders or deck boxes and things, this is probably the best size to make your cards at. We're going to make the resolution 300 pixels per inch and we're going to have the color setting on CMYK. CMYK, bleh, CMYK is the color setting that printers print with. RGB is for screens, grayscale is black and white. We want CMYK and that should be good. So now we have this size document which is going to be the size of your trading card. And what we're then going to do is go to the layers tab here. If you don't have the layers tab open already, just click window, scroll down to layers and tick it. That way you'll have the layers tab shown here. And this is how Photoshop works. It's all to do with layers. Uh, so we've got the background layer here. And then if we want to add something in front of the background, we can add a new layer here. That creates a new layer. And we are now currently drawing things on this layer. So I can go onto my brush tool here and draw whatever I want. We can't draw on the background layer, or we can apparently, but we shouldn't be able to draw on the background layer because it's locked. We can unlock a layer by clicking that and it doesn't become the background anymore. And then we can lock it again by clicking the little lock icon up here. Um, but layer one, we're going to create a new layer, layer one. And this is going to serve as the background for our card. Um, and what I think the best thing to do is just color a background, a kind of generic gray color. Um, so if you go on your colors here and select something kind of gray like that, you want to make the entire background of the card the standard color. And this is going to be the same color of the background of every card you make. If we go onto the gradient tool here, scroll down to the paint bucket, and then fill layer one with this gray color. Every, every trading card in your game should look like this. And I'll get into why this is important when we get to cutting out our cards. Because if you've got lots of cards side by side from one another and they all have different color backgrounds when you come to cut your cards out with a scissors or a knife around the side you're not going to be cutting things perfect and you'll have bits of cards spilling over onto the other cards and if they're all different colors around the borders it's going to look very scruffy so having every card you cut out the exact same kind of base color um, you're going to avoid that problem now we're going to add another layer um, on top of the background layer and add a shape this is kind of going to be where the shape that holds all the information for our cards. So I think a rounded rectangle is... We'll change the fill color of that to a, let's say, a blue. Cool. And then we'll make the stroke color of it. That's the outline color black. Cool. And then we'll draw a, we'll draw a rounded rectangle inside our template just here. 
Okay, this one looks a bit weird. We're going to want to go ahead and change the radius. That's the size of the corners here uh, to something a bit lower, maybe like 20. Um, and then unfortunately we will have to draw another rectangle for that to work. Cool. One thing you can do here that's a really good idea, I don't do this on my trading cards, but I think it looks great on a lot of other trading cards, is having some kind of texture in this area. So what you can do is if you go on the internet and find some kind of texture that you want, just drag it into your Photoshop document and then go edit, free transform, which then allows you to edit the orientation and the size of this shape. So because this has come in a new layer, what we want to do is make this the exact same size as our rounded rectangle that we have here. So what we're going to do is take our rounded rectangle and duplicate the layer. So now I've got two rounded rectangles and what we're going to do is, is rasterize this layer. So that means that the shape is no longer a rounded rectangle it's an image of a rounded rectangle if that makes sense we can't use the rounded rectangle tool to edit it at all uh, it just becomes pretty much the same as this image uh, that we've got here in layer 2 so what we're going to do here is go to the selection tool here um, quick selection tool which is this one and then if we go onto our rounded rectangle that we've rasterized we're going to go ahead and select the entire layer, which gives us a highlight. We've kind of selected the outline of this shape. If we then um, go back onto the layer of our space background, I'm going to bring this to the front layer, sorry. We can then copy and paste the sh this space background that's selected in the shape uh, of the rounded rectangle. So we're going to press edit, copy and edit paste you can see the shortcuts here if you want to use these instead we can then get rid of the old space shape and that gives us a rounded rectangle shaped space theme that fits perfectly into the shape we've got here what we can then do on this kind of space image here we can change the opacity to make it slightly see-through and that blue color can shine through kind of find a level that you want um, I think that about 30% looks good and then this can be the cool kind of more interesting than just a plain blue background um, background of our cards. We can also delete this rasterized layer of the rounded rectangle um, because this still just gives us the rounded rectangle that we had before, which we can then still like edit the color of um, and do all sorts of cool trading card stuff with it. So this is the background of the card done. Uh, we're now going to get to the information, like the text boxes and stuff. So what we're going to do here is we've got these four layers, which are kind of our background. We don't really need layer zero because that's not doing anything. Um, so these are all our backgrounds. So you can go ahead and lock these down so we can't edit them anymore uh, because we don't need to. What we're then going to do is make, you can make whatever shapes you want. On here, look, you can see you got round, you got rectangles, rounded rectangles, polygons, lines, whatever you want. Make whatever shape, text boxes, and things you want. So I'm just going to have a quick go here. I'll speed this up, but I'll make a little like background for the cards. Cool. So we've got a little template here. I don't really like this that much. It's just something that I could throw together with simple rectangles and rounded rectangles um, a little handy tool that we have here as well though is say um, you're struggling to like align your shapes like that um, you've got all the different layers of all the different shapes here but you want to get this box perfectly in the middle of these guys what you can do is select select all three of these shapes so click on them whilst holding the shift key so click this rounded rectangle we're going to click this regular rectangle and this one here as you can see they've all been highlighted in the layers panel around here and then if you see these little alignment tools over here you can press this button to um, kind of evenly distribute the horizontal centers as it says so this aligns them with the same amount of space in between each shape and then we can press this one here um, actually sorry we can press this one here which aligns the vertical centers so we'll have them all equal like that equidistant apart from each other um, so that's perfectly aligned these three uh, and then we can go ahead and just kind of sit them in place there So once you've got this template 
uh, in any trading card game, you need to have consistency between what all the cards look like. Um, so most of them, this is probably going to have like attack and defense stats or that kind of thing. Uh, so this is like a creature card template, for example. And then you can save this file out by, um, sorry, I keep using shortcuts. Save this file out as a kind of trading card um, template. And then every time you go to make a new trading card, if you save this to your desktop, uh, every time you go to make a new trading card, you can just open up this template file, add your names, add your artworks and stuff. You can close that now. Um, say we wanna make a new card. We can just open the template file in Photoshop and then we've got all this stuff laid out for us already. You can also set a template. Say you're doing like a sort of resource card that's got, I don't know, like a different color background. Um, you can change that and then Uh, save this out as like the trading card resource template let's say and then you can make every resource card like this but for now we're going to go edit step backwards and go back to our blue background lock this layer back in place um, and carry on making our card so the next thing i like to do personally is to put the artwork in place so what we're going to do here is go to the artwork file the raw image that we had before that we took off our camera just drag and drop it into your Photoshop document. My camera has this weird setup thing that um, comes up every time I upload something for some reason. Ah, now this has pasted itself in a layer that's quite far back. So what we're going to do is place it right there and then just click on the layer and bring it all the way up to the front, front of all our text boxes so that it's what we're looking at. And we can resize this guy again by going to the edit, free transform, option and then size him up using the arrows here if you hold the shift key whilst you're resizing something um, it keeps the ratio of like height to width of the card the same so you're not going to be like stretching out your drawing as you resize him um, it'll just stay nice and perfectly shaped like that cool so now we've got this image here um, and we need to get rid of all this white background so what we're going to do is, is go to this rectangle selection tool um, and make sure we're on the layer of the image and select our character you don't need to be perfect with this at all just be quite loose um, and then we're going to go edit copy so we've copied what we've selected here edit paste and then we can get rid of this old image so we've just got this more manageable sized picture that we can work with because i draw my artworks with like bold black lines this stage becomes quite easy what we can do here is we get, if we go to the eraser tool and then the magic eraser tool here we can go ahead and just click on any of these white areas and just get rid of them instantly like that. Like that, nice and easy. Uh, we'll just do this around here. So we've just got the creature's artwork. Uh, there's a few bits here. I'll show you how to edit these later. But as you can see, um, although we've erased lots of bits here, there's still some of my like bad coloring in showing through. So if we up the tolerance of our eraser tool to like 80 or something, we can just keep using the magic arrays tool and get rid of all the bits that we've messed up on. There's always a few little bits of white hiding as well. Cool. So, oh, okay. This is messed up a bit, but what we can do is just select the whole thing up to about here where his artwork will probably cut off and then go back to the eraser tool. Not the magic arrays tool this time, just the regular eraser tool and just get rid of all this. Because we've only got this top area selected, we're not going to be erasing any of this guy's artwork. And then we can go select, deselect, which stops selecting everything. So what we can do now is again, use the free transform tool, command T. I'm going to start using commands now. Uh, just make him kind of fill out the box a bit more. Um, we don't need all of that sword in his text box. Uh, we can have him look like that. Looks pretty epic. And then we've got him inside the box here. And now we're up to the stage. We've got the artwork here, but he doesn't look very bright or eye-catching so what we can do is if we go to the image button here we've got the adjustments tab and we can change all these different things now if you're new to Photoshop I really suggest just messing around with these figure out which ones work for your images um, but I tend to find the curves tool works really well um, for getting the brightness of your images correctly you kind of change drag this bar up here um, this can make him like darker or brighter um, but I think the best thing is if you touch about a third of the way up and then make a kind of inverse curve like that it brightens up the lighter areas of the card and then if you make a sort of S shape here that makes the dark bits darker and the bright colors brighter 
Um, I don't know the science behind this, don't know much about color, but this is just what seems to work for me. Other tools, other tools like brightness and things, I think these just seem to like wash the card out and make it look too kind of fake, but the curves tool seems to do a good job for me. So this guy's nice and bright now. Um, but we've got a few of these mistakes that I've made before I accidentally drew one of his horns too big. So what we can do here is go back to our like various selection tools that we can use. I like this one, the polygon lasso tool. Um, you've got quite a few different ones, but the polygon lasso tool, uh, whilst we've got this layer selected, we can click and make our own really precise selection of the card. So if we select how we really want his horn to look, and then it's important to just make sure that you've got inside the selection the bits that you don't want. Don't select any of this red area that you'll want to keep. You just kind of select the stuff you want to get rid of. And then we go back to our eraser tool and just erase all that stuff that we don't need. Deselect, press command D, go back and there is horns looking good as new. I've also made a mistake here. If we go back to our normal selection tool, you can see that I've accidentally drawn over his body um, through his neck, which I didn't want to do. So what you can do is press, is use the eyedropper tool or just press the letter I on your keyboard. Select the color that we want with that and then go back to the brush tool. Uh, this brush size is really big, so I'm going to go down, turn it into a more manageable size, like size 6 brush there, that's much more sensible. And then make sure we've got this color selected. Sorry, that's not selecting it. If you use this switch round arrow, you switch the color you want to the front layer and then just color in this bit of neck, the color that we want. And there, nothing ever happened. Cool. Now, an interesting thing whilst I was drawing this guy, the pen, my gold pen ran out of ink um, and I wanted to fill in his body gold, but didn't have the ink in my pen to do it. So we're going to go back to the paint bucket tool, find a color that we like that's gold. something like that and then just fill in the areas here that we wanted to have gold okay actually I don't like that gold it looks too similar to the gold in his armor here so we're just gonna uh, make that slightly darker fill in his face Go back to the brush tool and get rid of that red bit that I've messed up. And this guy's pretty much done. We just need him to fit inside his text box. So what we can do, I'll make him a bit bigger just for this example. Um, so I want to show off as much of the artwork as possible, um, making the card nice and big. So if we make a selection that's pretty much the same size as the rectangle, we can go ahead, press Command C. Command V to copy and paste. We can make our character fit perfectly inside this text box. Then, then it's time to add some text to the card. I like adding the artwork before the text because sometimes I'll put an image in and be like, oh, this artwork put on the card template looks way more powerful than I initially wanted him to be. So I'm going to bump his stats up a bit. Um, but you press the T for the text tool here and just place text anywhere. Type whatever you want to call him. Call him Space Sentinel. It's not Snetinal, Sentinel. Um, and then we'll select this, change the color to black because that's more sensible. And just put that text in the middle of this text box here. With text boxes, they're really easy to use. You can literally just click anywhere. I can write text in the middle of nowhere if you want. But I'll just finish up the card and then um, get on with the video. Cool, so this card here is finished. Um, obviously you can make your cards a lot more complex than this. This was just a very basic card to get you guys started on using Photoshop and show you how to make trading cards. Um, I've just given him basic things like a name. Uh, sorry, I should change the color of this. Just given him a name, a kind of stats, a rarity, a little flavor text and whatever. Uh, but this card now is done, so you can go ahead and save it out. as a JPEG image. So this is how you're gonna put it onto your Word document and then print out the card. Um, uh, we'll save it as a maximum quality because the file isn't a very big image because it's only two and a half by three and a half inches. 
Save it as its maximum resolution. You want your cards to look as crisp as possible. So save that out to our desktop. And then we can go ahead, open a Microsoft Word or Pages document. Just drag him in. And that's annoying because he's come out as a weird size. He should be two and a half by three and a half inches. Uh, not to worry. What we can do is make a rectangle on our Word document that is that is 2.5. by 3.5 inches and then if we line up our card with this resize him so that he's the same size as this text box uh, we can add as many copies as we want to this document here line them all up like so um, and then print them off uh, and with this size trading card, you should easily fit um, nine cards per page to be printed. Um, and as you can see, uh, what we did before when we talked about making the backgrounds of the cards all the same color, just so we can line them up and when we cut out the cards, there won't be different color gaps in between each card. Uh, maybe you want to leave a tiny little bit of white space in between every card so that you know where one ends and where one starts, but that shouldn't matter too much. And there you're ready to print off your cards and get started with your trading card game. Um, so thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. I've not done a Photoshop tutorial before and it is quite a complicated software to get your head around if you're just used to using Microsoft Word or something along those lines. Um, so hopefully this was clear. There's obviously loads of beginner Photoshop tutorials that are professionally done around on YouTube. So you can go on that and then come back to this video if you want to understand it a bit more. Um, but apart from that, not got much else to say, but please like, comment, subscribe. This character, whose name isn't Space Sentinel, his name is Thaddeus the Utopian General. He'll be shown in one of my upcoming videos about the Sindian or Heaven Planet starter deck that's coming out soon. Um, so stay tuned for that. If you want to get your hands on some Chaos Galaxy packs, um, I'm looking at my own Photoshop tutorials obviously, just go on the Game Crafter website and search up uh, Chaos Galaxy. And then that'll take you to the online store of all the different Chaos Galaxy products that have been released so far. So, uh, check that out. Obviously, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow me on Instagram. Check out the Discord. There'll be a link in the description below to the whole Chaos Galaxy community Discord. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.